was needed. Feed the people. Feed the world. And we've had our ups and downs, and I've spent my entire political career defending subsidies for agriculture. That's about to phase out. We're just about to move away. In fact, I predict the next farm bill will not have a subsidy for agriculture. And I will predict I will be supporting that because it is now no longer necessary in the international marketplace. My only justification for in the past backing subsidies was to maintain a level playing field for our producers in the international marketplace. Because I recognize the international marketplace was where the action was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and today the international marketplace is where everybody in this room is. If we cannot compete in the international marketplace over the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years, we're going to have a difficult time. And the numbers you saw on the average chart with the bottom 40% and even the top are going to be challenged in a way we're not used to being challenged. Now, that's not all bad. And I'm not a pessimist. I'm an optimist. But to get there, we need to start honestly discussing some of the challenges facing all of industry. And that's why things like cap and trade were perceived correctly by agriculture and the overall business community, as well as the oil and gas industry, to be a very negative component. Why? Because we were going to have tremendous increases of cost, and we were going to get there before the technology was ready to deal with the problem we were trying to solve. And we were going to increase costs all across the board on businesses in America without taking a look at what the rest of the world was and is going to be doing. Made no sense to me. Where the oil industry is far developing all of the supplemental energy we possibly can because it's in our best interest to do so. And we are spending more money in developing environmentally sound ways to develop the yet untapped resources of America. We are spending more money than anyone else on developing supplemental fuel. Well kept secret. Politically, it is really great for politicians, some thereof, to get after big oil. Exxon Mobil, the big four letter word. Well, Exxon Mobil doesn't crack the top 10 as far as energy producers. And remember the chart? The big, the top 10 are folks that have a little political unrest, and a lot of them don't like us. And for us to put our future on them makes to me, no sense. So, I, we, I have been all of my political life in Congress, before Congress and after Congress, developed all of the supplemental energy. And notice how I use the word supplemental. There will not be an alternative to fossil fuels in my lifetime and probably my grandchildren's lifetime. <coughs> but at some point in time, there will be. At some point in time, we're going to suck everything out of this good earth that there is down there, and something else is going to have to come along. But it's going to be a long time before we get there. And energy and energy policy is going to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, determiner of what the future of America is going to look like in our GDP. We cannot afford. The market will not sustain it. So let's try to keep our energy policy as market-oriented as possible. Not a doubt in my mind, we'll make it. No.